Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. Proverbs chapter 7. My son, keep my words and store up my commands within you. Keep my commands and you will live. Guard my teachings as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Say to wisdom, you are my sister, and to insight, you are my relative. They will keep you from the adulterous woman, from the wayward woman with her seductive words. At the window of my house, I looked down through the lattice. I saw among the simple, I noticed among the young men, a youth who had no sense. He was going down the street near her corner, walking along in the direction of her house at twilight, as the day was fading, as the dark of night was setting in. Then out came a woman to meet him, dressed like a prostitute and with crafty intent. She is unruly and defiant. Her feet never stay home. Now in the street, now in the squares, at every corner she lurks. She took hold of him and kissed him, and with a brazen face she said, Today I fulfilled my vows, and I have food from my fellowship offering at home. So I came out to meet you. I looked for you, and I found you. I have covered my bed with colored linens from Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let's drink deeply of love until morning. Let's enjoy ourselves with love. My husband is not at home. He's gone on a long journey. He took his purse filled with money and will not be home until the full moon. With persuasive words, she led him astray. She seduced him with her smooth talk. All at once, he followed her like an ox going to the slaughter like a deer stepping into a noose, until an arrow pierces his liver, like a bird darting into a snare, little knowing that it will cost him his life. Now then, my sons, listen to me. Pay attention to what I say. Do not let your heart turn to her ways or stray into her paths. Many are the victims she has brought down. Her slain are a mighty throng. Her house is a highway to the grave, leading down to the chambers of death. And once again, Solomon returns to seemingly his favorite theme, that of an adulterous woman. And um, as I mentioned previously in another chapter of Proverbs, Solomon was an expert on women, if there ever was one. The man had 700 wives and 300 concubines. And so if, if the abundance of all those ladies caused him to be an expert, then he was a serious expert. But he continued to warn his sons, interestingly enough, about unfaithful women and particularly adultery. Here, he gives a very detailed explanation of how people get seduced. And he puts it in terms of uh, he observed this seduction taking place from his window. So he starts out with his typical admonition as the proverb opens for his son to pay attention to his words and to to take note and put them on the tablet of his heart. He says, um, you should recognize wisdom and say that wisdom is your sister and insight is your relative, and they'll keep you away from the adulterous woman and from the wayward woman and her seductive words. So here he launches into this with the instructions that wisdom will protect you from an adulterous woman and from seductive words. He proceeds to give an explanation of how people get seduced. He says, At the window of my house, I looked down through the lattice. I saw among the simple, I noticed among the young men, a youth who had no sense. So whether this is a a little story or this actually happened, we don't know. But he's saying it as if he observed these things that that were taking place. The young man was going down the street near her corner, walking in the direction of her house at twilight, as the day was fading, as the dark of night set in. Then out came a woman to meet him, 
dressed like a prostitute and with crafty intent. She is unruly and defiant. Her feet never stay at home. Now in the street, now in the squares, at every corner she lurks. And so these um, seductive people are out lurking at every turn, apparently. The woman took hold of him and kissed him. And with a brazen face, she said, Today I fulfilled my vows, and I have food from my fellowship offering at home. So she's a religious lady, and yet she's a seductress. Verse 15, So I came out to meet you. I looked for you, and I have found you. I have covered my bed with colored linens from Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh and aloes and cinnamon. Come, let us drink deeply of love until morning. Let's enjoy ourselves with love. My husband's not at home. I suppose that um, the vast majority of adultery that takes place among married couples, if it take place in the, the home of the wife, that statement is made. My husband is not at home. This lady says he's gone on a long journey. He took his purse filled with money and will not be home until the full moon. So he's gone for a long time. Continuing with the proverb, verse 21, with persuasive words, she led him astray. She seduced him with her smooth talk. Now, of course, this is a woman toward a young man, but it would work easily well with a, a man towards a young woman. And so the seduction, once the seduction occurs, um, the victim is in a terrible position. And the, this proverb concludes with his, his risk. Verse 22, all at once he followed her like an ox going to the slaughter, like a deer stepping into a noose, until an arrow pierces his liver, like a bird darting into a snare, little knowing it will cost him his life. And so the, the image here is like a trapped animal. He's like a trapped animal after he's been uh, seduced. And then it concludes with these few words, basically saying that if you surrender to seduction, it can lead you to a grave. Verse 24, Now then, my sons, listen to me. Pay attention to what I say. Do not let your heart turn to her ways or stray into her path. Many are the victims she has brought down. Her slain are a mighty throng. Her house is a highway to the grave, leading down to the chambers of death. And so, friends, I, I just want to conclude this with prayer. I'm not going to say much else, but I do want to pray. Lord, we live in a time where sexual promiscuity is rampant. God, help us be people of sexual purity. Lord, help us to see these things as you see them. And I want to include pornography. This is such a, a seductive temptation for many young people and even many older people, both male and females. God, let us recognize that we were not created to view images of sexual intimacy, nor were we created to be in sexual intimacy with multiple partners. You created sex for our benefit and blessing, but within the confines of marriage. Help us, Lord, to share what's good in the ways that you ordained them to be shared. We pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.